In this video, I'm gonna tell you the three worst things that you can do as a dog parent. Keep in mind, these are my opinion. These aren't 100% fact. So take it with a grain of salt if you want to, or you can respect the opinion, or you can leave your own opinion in the, in the comment section. But I'm gonna give you three things dog parents do wrong and might actually hurt their relationship with their dog. Number three, we've got free feeding. And when I say free feeding, if you don't know what free feeding is, that is whenever you just put food in a bowl and you put it out and you leave the food, you leave the food out basically the entire day. And you say, yeah, my dog will eat whenever they get hungry uh, and they'll stop whenever they're not hungry. And you just let them choose whenever they want to eat or not. So my first argument for that, you know, whenever I was growing up, I didn't get to just choose, pick and choose when I wanted to eat. Like I had to ask, I had to ask my parents, my parents let me eat. That's one thing, that's just, that's just a silly argument. That's a petty argument. But the real argument is that you are surrendering training time when you free feed, right? A dog's best time to train is when they're hungry, right? Or when they're motivated. So if you train right before you eat, that's two birds and one stone, your dog's getting, getting to work and it's getting motivated and you're bonding with your dog. And then if you free feed, you can't feed your dog from your hand or you can't feed your dog, you can't hold the dog's bowl and feed them. That's another time that you're building respect and you're building a relationship with your puppy or your dog. And if you are free feeding, you're just getting rid of that entire experience. And maybe the most important thing is whenever you are trying to potty train your dog or house train your dog, you need to be able to know when your dog needs to use the bathroom or your puppy. If you cannot predict when your puppy needs to use the bathroom, then how can you really house train your puppy? That's how you get accidents to the house because you don't know when your dog wants to use the bathroom. So if you are free feeding, you never know when your dog is eating and when they're digesting things and how long it takes for them to digest. That is something you can learn from feeding and having actual feeding times like breakfast, lunch, and dinner for a puppy or breakfast and dinner for an actual adult dog. When you have timed feeding sessions, like I said, I know that my dogs like to use the bathroom 45 minutes after they eat. So what do we do? We feed them, we let them relax for 45 minutes, take them out to use the bathroom, and they are good for hours. Okay, so that's it for that one. Number two is marking the bad and not noticing the good. And this is unintentional. I'm not saying that this is an, an intentional thing, but if you actually take a step back, try to look at yourself in a bird's eye view, a lot of times you'll realize, okay, I'm scolding my dog. You know, I'm telling them no, I'm telling them, uh -uh. you know, I'm telling them come here, go there, go here, go here, lay down, right? And I'm guilty of it too sometimes. So you tell them a lot of negative marks, right? You know, let's say they're chewing on a carpet, you say some stop chewing on the carpet they're biting you say stop biting me but how many times are you praising your dog and how many times are you tell them they're a good boy and how many times are you noticing the things that they're doing good like whenever they're just chilling for a little bit and you're rewarding them for chilling look at this my dog over there just found another dog let's see if we can get this on the camera <laughs> like i was saying number two is marking the bad and not noticing the good one day try to intentionally mark all the good things that your dog do rather than marking the wrong things intentionally tell your dog what to do and praise them for doing what you want them to do instead of trying to tell them what not to do just think about it and you'll see that's number two and the final thing on my list the number one thing that dog parents do wrong that ruin their relationship with their puppy or their dog is that they use commands too many times. Oh my goodness. As a dog trainer, this is probably one of those things that grinds my gears, that's what they say, right? Grinds my gears. Oh my gosh, whenever somebody, especially when they're talking to my dogs and they try to tell my dog to sit and they say sit five times, I'm just like, I'm just like, ooh, it's like super cringy. And this is like the entire philosophy of my dog training, is that you only use commands when you know they're gonna work, so that whenever you use commands, they always work. When a dog is in training and they don't know the command right off the bat, then I would try to refrain from using it unless you get them halfway through the command, then you use it. I can't stand whenever somebody is trying to get their dog to sit and they're like, sit, uh, -uh sit, 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 sit. Then they finally sit. You just told your dog to sit six times and your dog sat once. Is that not a problem? Like that, that, that kind of seems like a problem to me. You can fix that. But like I said, if you have a dog that's in training and you don't, and it doesn't sit when you say sit the first time, don't say it. Use your hand motions. Like in a video that I, you know, that we posted about two weeks ago, we have a video of teach your dog how to sit and stay. 
You use your hand motion until your dog starts leaning back into that sit and then you say sit and you say it once. If you do say sit and they don't do it, don't say it again. Make sure that they, they're listening and you might have to put them in a sit and then say sit. Do not say sit five times until they sit and it won't work. And that is my top three things that dog parents do wrong that ruin relationship with your animal.